Hi, I'm Christine. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm here with some recommendations for the hidden or secret identity trope. Okay, so this is a trope that I realized that I really enjoy and I didn't realize how many of them I have read. So I recently did an Instagram post, which if you aren't following me on Instagram, definitely go do that. It's the same name. Christy reads a lot. I've been over there longer than I have been on YouTube. So definitely go check that out. I do definitely share a ton over there. I post, I think like every day. So definitely check that out. It's where I kind of post recommendations, what I'm currently reading, all of those things. So I first did the post over there and decided to do a video format as well to kind of talk a little bit more about the books and recommend them here as well in case you aren't on Instagram. So that said, I was realizing while I was making this post that I have read quite a few of these recently, as well as just kind of in general, I have read a lot more than I thought I had. So I had to kind of cut the post short, but I have even more. So if you happen to have read all of these or you want even more recommendations with this trope, definitely follow me on Goodreads as well. It's always linked in the description of all of my videos. Not only do I review every book that I read on Goodreads, I also kind of categorize them by sub tropes and things like that. I have lists and groups and all of those things. So if you want even more with the hidden and secret identity trope, I have more over there as well. I'm just going to keep it to I think I have like 18 to talk about today. So one thing I realized that I love about this trope is kind of the angst level that it brings to it whether one character knows who the other one is or the other one doesn't or in some cases both of them don't know who one another is and like they either talk or text in a separate combo and then they realize they know one another in real life and kind of just like that angst and tension it creates I absolutely eat that up so I feel like that's why I really enjoy this trope. So let's just get into the recs. I have some contemporaries. I have some historicals. Let's get into it. So first up is Good Game by Madison Fox. This was the first book actually her debut book. It's her first book in a series that she's writing about video game streamers and this one was so good. I loved it last year. So basically in here the hero is the one with kind of the secret identity. So he is a masked video game streamer and him and his friends are all masked and so people don't know who they are when they're kind of streaming and playing a video games. And so the heroine actually ends up meeting the hero at a video game award show. She's actually like one of the servers there and they kind of hit it off and have a little bit of a moment while he's masked. And so then she actually ends up running into him a couple days later where he is kind of unmasked and just in his like ordinary everyday look and so she ends up falling for both guys and not realizing that they're the same person but of course he knows who she is because she's never been masked and he knows her identity and so the tension and the angst and the video game streaming and just all of the things I was obsessed with this one and had such a fun time I can't wait for the next books in the series to come out. Then I have The Puck Secret by GN Wright. This is one that I loved last year as well. So this is a hockey romance series where the hero actually plays hockey with the heroine's brother. The hero actually has reasons as well that you learn about in the story of why he absolutely hates the heroine and her brother's family and so he kind of can't stand her in real life but they end up meeting one another because she actually texts the wrong number at the beginning of the story so she ends up texting somebody and it actually ends up reaching the hero and so they start this like text combo where they actually connect and start to kind of vibe with one another but neither realizes who they're talking to and that they know one another in real life and so just like the tension and the angst and the steam in this one so so good I was obsessed I cannot wait to read more from this author because I loved this book. <laughs> so next up is Tempting the Player by Rebecca Jinshack. This is part of one of her college sports series but you can definitely read this one as a standalone and this one is less sports than any of the others. So basically in this one the heroine was a former child star where she kind of just wants a regular college life now. She just wants to experience life, go through college, go through all of those things and so she doesn't realize that her parents actually end up hiring her a bodyguard who's kind of watching her on campus who ends up being the hero but when the heroine meets him she thinks he's just around all the time conveniently and she's kind of feeling him and feels like he's feeling her as well because he's always around and so he went to college there I think he actually played football there as well if I remember correctly and so she kind of just thinks he's feeling her out and then eventually she of course realizes that he is her hired bodyguard so she feels kind of hurt and it kind of goes from there so this one was a, a lot of fun I really love Rebecca Jinshek's audios especially so definitely check this one out I know it's on Hoopla and Libby so definitely do that next up is The Neighbor Favorite by Christina Forrest this one was one of my favorite reads of 2023 I loved this book so so much this one is so cute and so fun if you love books that kind of exist or have characters that exist in like the bookish world this one is definitely Definitely that. The heroine works at a publishing company and she wants to eventually be like a children's book editor. And so one day the heroine ends up reaching out to her favorite fantasy author. So she emails him and they start kind of this email pen pal communication. And so they're supposed to kind of meet in real life one of these days and he actually ends up ghosting her. And so nothing comes of that. And then we cut to like a little bit later and she ends up getting a new kind of neighbor at her apartment. And of course that is the hero. And, she, and then she ends up falling for the hero and not realizing that he's her favorite fantasy author, that he ghosted her. And so it kind of goes from there. This one was just so cute 
cute, so fun. I loved all the like bookish charm in here and the bookish conversations. So, so good, especially the conversations about like female fantasy writers. Obsessed, love this one. Definitely check it out. Next up is Neutral Zone by Tegan Hunter. So this is part of her Carolina Comet series. This is actually the last book in the series, but you can definitely read them in any order or as standalones as well. But they do kind of exist in the same hockey romance series. I'm actually gonna have another one to recommend from the series as well, because I feel like Tegan loves this trope as well. So in this one, the heroine is actually the one with the secret identity. So basically she is by a day, works at this like coffee donut truck shop where the hero also frequents and is like a customer there. And then by night or in her after hours, she's actually a curvy plus size cam girl. And so the hero is actually one of her watchers and follows her kind of cam girl site. And so he's a fan of her and also a fan of her in real life. And so it kind of goes from there. This one's just very cute, low angst, love the friend group. If you haven't checked out the series, I definitely recommend. Next up is Faked by Carla Sorensen. And this is part of her Ward family or Ward sisters series. Either way, one of those. In this one, the heroine is actually the one who ends up posing as her twin sister. So basically her twin sister is best friends with the heroine's crush. And so one day the heroine's twin sister can't make it to this like event or dinner she's supposed to go to. And so the heroine ends up stepping in and is like, well, I can take your place and I get to spend the night with my crush. I'm so excited. And so she ends up going to this dinner expecting to spend the evening with her crush. But instead her crush's bad boy, like half brother shows up instead. And he like immediately knows who she is. And so she thinks she's getting away with playing as her twin sister, but he can see straight through that. I love this one very like opposites tracked and they end up I think fake dating as well which is why it's called faked and it kind of goes from there I really enjoyed this one I feel like I went in with low expectations because I felt like a lot of people didn't enjoy this one but I really liked it and so I definitely recommend <laughs> next up is sweet talk by Cara Bastone so this is part of her audible original series where she has like these full cast audio narrations are kind of like a graphic audios where you hear like sounds outside and kind of a full cast which I really enjoyed so we'll kind of just quickly go through this one because this is kind of like a novella but basically in this one the hero ends up texting the wrong number he saves phone numbers and his phone is kind of just like quick initials before he realizes who the person is. So he thinks he's texting one person. He's actually texting the heroine. She knows who he is in real life and is like, if he realized who he was talking to, he probably wouldn't like it because there is some feelings there. So yeah, this one was a lot of fun. Definitely recommend checking it out, especially on audio. It's so well done. All right, like I said, I had another Tegan Hunter. So this one is Puck Shy. This is also part of her Carolina Comet series. This is actually the first book in the series. But like I said, you could read them in any order. They kind of follow the same hockey friend group, but you can read them like however you want. So in this one, the hero and the heroine actually end up on a road trip together where she doesn't realize who he is and he's like this NHL player and she is kind of anti-sports so as soon as he realizes that on the road trip he's like well I'm not going to tell her that I am a sports like hockey player and so it kind of goes from there with them kind of traveling back together and all of that. Like I said the series is very like low angst and just cute and fun. I especially recommend them on audio. I feel like they're so well done that way. They're pretty short. I think they're like six and a half ish hour audios so highly recommend the series. Next up is Deceiving the Corsair by Ruby Dixon. So we're going to switch it up to some sci-fi alien romances and this one is so much fun. So I recently did a binge of the Corsair series. They're all on Hoopla, on audio, so I highly recommend. They're all kind of shortish, like 200 pages or less, kind of novella length. This one is basically, like I said, alien space pirates and it is a lot of fun. The hero in this one is the alien and the heroine is actually human, but the hero thinks she's an alien just like him. So they both kind of work in communications for each of their spaceships where she kind of works with her kind of pseudo adopted alien brothers and the hero works with the heroes of the rest of the series. So they both kind of end up chatting as they're both working in comms every night and so it kind of goes from there and then they end up having to meet in person where he of course then realizes that she's a human feels kind of duped by that and it kind of goes from there highly recommend this series there are some content warnings though they all kind of have some trauma and maybe some harder topics so just know that going in next up is a lie for a lie by helena hunting this is the first book in her i think it's all in series i really enjoyed the series they are available on kindle unlimited with the read and listen feature which is so nice so basically if you download the book and get it on your kindle unlimited subscription it comes comes with the audiobook as well. So you can listen to the audio as long as you have the KU book checked out on your library. Highly recommend the audios are so fun as well. Basically in this one, the hero and the heroine, they meet on a flight and she is not a fan of flying and they are going up there for reasons. He's going up there for a new NHL job. She is going up there, I think, to see her father. There is some complications with the flight and she's kind of a nervous flyer. They end up hooking up and kind of going their separate ways without realizing who one another is. She doesn't realize that he's like a hockey player at all. We end up having a time jump and cutting to a little bit later and some things go on where she finds Finally realizes who he is. There are some secrets to unravel, kind of all of these things. I had a really good time with this one. Next up is A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. I love all of her books so much, especially her romances, but I also love like her kind of thriller and gothic reads as well. I feel like her books just always hit for me. And I've read most of them and I haven't talked about them and I feel like a long time because I read them pre my YouTube channel. So any chance I can like throw one of her books in to recommend, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so Princess in Theory is the first one in her Reluctant Royals series. Royal books don't always work for me, but Alyssa Cole's work so well, 
especially in audio. Like I have visceral memories of listening to the audios like on certain drives that I was doing and just still remember them years later. They're so good. <laughs> Basically in this one, the heroine lives in New York. She's going to college and she ends up getting an email that she is kind of the missing betrothed of this African prince. And so she's like, oh my God, like whatever. Such a scam, such a lie, not falling for it. So she keeps like putting the emails to her junk folder. Has a very much like Cinderella princess diaries vibe to it. And so basically the hero is the African prince. And so he ends up showing up to New York and he's like, I want to get to know who this woman is that I'm betrothed to. And so he ends up kind of posing as a new worker at a restaurant that she works at. So he kind of wants to get to know her first. Goes from there. So cute. So fun. I love this series. So definitely recommend this one. And then lastly, I have The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. This is one of my favorite reads. I love Lana Ferguson's books so, so much. They just work for me so well. Basically in this one, the heroine is hired as the nanny for the hero. He's a single dad. And so she ends up working for him. And this is one of the books where they both don't realize who one another is. So basically she used to be this like masked wigged cam girl where she never showed her like kind of true identity. And the hero was like one of her popular like biggest fan watchers. And so he never had his camera on. She was always masked and wigged. So like they don't realize who one another is and that they have this kind of like complex history together. And so it kind of slowly unravels and it's so, so good. The tension, the angst, the single dad nanny trope, obsessed. <laughs> All right, next up, we're going to get into the historicals. So I love my historical romances. And first up is The Notorious Lord Knightley by Lorraine Heath. This is part of her Chessmen kind of Masters of Seduction series. Highly recommend this one. This is book two in the series. I love book two and book three. You can definitely just jump into this one on its own. You don't need to read the first book. They kind of just exist in the same friend group. Basically, in this one, the hero left the heroine at the altar. And it kind of jumps to five years later where the heroine is now kind of publishing this anonymous kind of scandal book, scandal sheet, where she is writing about the notorious Lord K. So she's not naming the hero, but like everybody in society kind of knows it's him. And she's just kind of writing about his exploits, his lies, kind of all the things that he did her wrong on. And so it is so good where he's basically like, who is ruining my reputation? It goes from there. There are some secrets involved and you kind of learn about their history and when they were going to get married in the past. So this one is angsty. It is second chance. It is just all the things that I love. Lorraine Heath is my historical romance queen. She just always delivers and like gives more than she tells you in the beginning. Like her synopsis are always like the tip of the iceberg and then the rest of the book kind of unravels from there and I'm obsessed with this one. Highly recommend if you haven't checked it out yet. So next is Thief of Shadows by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is part of her Maiden Lane series. I highly recommend the entire series. I do have a whole author guide on Elizabeth Hoyt because I've read all of her historicals. Highly recommend them all and I highly recommend the Maiden Lane series in particular. Probably read it in order because you kind of follow this whole overarching of plot and story and characters but let's just talk about it. So this one is Thief of Shadows. I think this is book four in the series. A lot of the books in the series could actually fit into the hidden or secret identity trope because we follow these ghosts of St. Giles which are basically like these masked vigilantes. So in this one we follow the hero Winter and by day he kind of runs at this foundling home and is just kind of always looking after the helpless or the weak or the ones who need help that is what he gives. He's just a giver and so by night he's actually a masked vigilante who kind of takes on the kind of London streets. The heroine in this one is a widowed patroness who just kind of gives her money gives her time to the orphanage and so she knows Winter kind of in her everyday life and then she ends up meeting him as the masked vigilante as well and so she kind of knows both versions of him and not realizing that it is the same person at first. This one has a virgin hero. So good. I highly recommend the Maiden Lady series if you haven't read it yet. All right and then a couple more historical romances. So we have Love in the Afternoon by Lisa Kleypas. This is part of her Hathaways series. I love Lisa Kleypas. Love the Hathaways so so much. This is actually making me want to reread a bunch of these that I'm talking about and this series in particular I love. So this one we get a bit of a pen pal relationship where the heroine is actually writing to the hero. He's away at war and he actually thinks he's writing to her friend who was supposed to be kind of somebody that he was maybe courting and maybe gonna have like a relationship with and so that girl didn't want to write to him anymore. She's like he's boring. I'm not into it. And, and so she has her friend who is the heroine and one of the Hathaways ends up writing to the hero instead. So they are kind of like pen pals for years. They hit it off. He just doesn't realize who he's talking to. So he ends up actually returning from war and he is a very changed man since the war. There's a lot of PTSD and trauma in this one. So just know that going in and he kind of meets the heroine in real life not realizing that she was the one writing to him all of those years. And he is both kind of intrigued and fascinated and kind of appalled with her because she is one who just takes in all of the weak, all of the helpless like animals and kind of has her own like little animal sanctuary. And he's just like, why is she always like having these like animal critters around her? Like what is up with this girl? So it kind of goes from there. It is so cute, so sweet, so charming. Obsessed with Lisa Kleypas, obsessed with the Hathaways. Cannot recommend this series enough. Next is Slightly Wicked by Mary Baylog. So this is part of her Bedouin series, which I highly recommend if you want kind of a historical romance that is kind of cozy and 
and a little bit low angst and just kind of that whole family vibe. I really enjoy these. Kind of like comfort reads is what I kind of describe her books as. Kind of just like quiet, charming, comforty reads, if that makes sense. So basically in this one, the heroine is in a stagecoach. Her stagecoach ends up getting overturned and she kind of has these like fantastical ideas of going on this grand adventure. She likes to live in this like fantasy world in her mind. And so she's like dreaming and fantasizing about a hero coming to rescue her. And so at the same time, the hero shows up and ends up rescuing her. And so she decides to kind of just play into it. And so she's like, I am this actress and I'm this like famed courtesan. And so it kind of goes from there where they end up hooking up. So they end up meeting again later at the hero's grandmother's house because the hero's grandmother is trying to set him up with somebody. And so the heroine is actually, I think she's like the lady's companion to her cousin or something like that. And that is one of the ladies that the hero's grandmother is trying to set him up with. And so those two realize they know one another instead. And it kind of goes from there. Next up is Never Judge a Lady by Her Cover by Sarah McLean. So this is the last one in one of her series. And so basically the whole series is kind of alluding to this book. We're trying to get to this book. And so basically in here, as you can tell by the title, the heroine kind of lives her life as maybe somebody she's not. Basically, she's a queen of the London underworld and nobody knows it because of reasons. So it kind of goes from there. Such a fun time. I kind of just want people to go into this one, go into this series without kind of, you know, figuring it out until you get there. Definitely a fun one. And then lastly is The Phantom of Drury Lane by Kate Bateman. So this is a historical romance novella that I absolutely adored last year. Basically, this is a Phantom of the Opera retelling. So the hero in here is kind of the one with a secret identity, which I think you can kind of figure out where the story is going to go based on the retelling it is. So fun, so cute, so charming. It's a historical romance novella. It's on KU. I highly recommend. It's just so fun. Basically, in here, the heroine and the hero know one another in the past. He was also like friends with her brother for years, and he is back from the war. He's scarred. And so it kind of goes from there where they have to work together to kind of unsolve this mystery of a phantom at an opera house. And so, yeah, it goes from there. All right, so those are the 18 romance recs I have for you today for the trope of the hidden or secret identity. Definitely let me know in the comments if you've read any of these, if you have any to recommend me with this trope as well, because like I said, I realize I absolutely love this trope. Like I said, if you want even more recs with this trope, definitely check out my Goodreads because I have even more kind of labeled under this group list, whatever you call it, over there. If you want to leave me an emoji instead to let me know that you watched this video today, maybe leave me like a flower emoji since I have my flowery shirt on today and we are in April, so it's supposed to be springtime. So definitely do that. As always, if there's another trope that you want me to do recommendations for, definitely let me know because I'm always looking for more ideas and wanting to give more recs. So do that for sure. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and I will see you in my next one.